Matsutake Gohan, traditional Japanese rice dish. I am here to make Matsutake Gohan. It is a savory rice dish that I'm going to try to put as many mushrooms into as I can. Uh, I'm also going to add some fish and some ginkgo nuts. And it's sort of a, a classic Japanese thing. And I'm, I've never made this before. I've done similar things, but I'm going to give it a shot and just want you guys to see what I'm doing. So let me point you at my board here. So you can see what I've got out here. Um, ooh, there we go. Okay. You can hear some sizzling in the background. It's because I'm frying up uh, what's called the Imperial Cat, which is a Matsutake lookalike uh, that I've heard is edible and I've never tried it. I did pickle some earlier this year, but I haven't even got around to trying that yet. But uh, we're making Matsutake Gohan. So first important things, some Matsutake mushrooms. Um, I put a lot of my really good ones into Matsutake Sake earlier. But... Uh, that's now in the fridge curing. I've got, this is a mixture of the Matsutake sake and mirin that I made last year. And I just mixed them together to liberate one of the jars to make, make a fresh batch. Um, but I'm gonna use a bunch of this and I'll use some of these fresh ones. I've got some ginkgo nuts. Um, I've got a little umeboshi paste and a little ginger, which I don't think are traditional, but I can't do anything traditional. So I've got to put my own spin on everything. And uh, after talking to Leah Mycelia last week, she was saying that one of her prep, favorite preps from Matsutake was actually like a, a ginger pickle uh, that had been done with, with Matsutake. And I thought that that was a really fun idea. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of riff on that in this dish. I'm also going to add some fish uh, because I bought some fish yesterday and I, I just need to use it up. And uh, I thought it would be nice to have that kind of extra protein and some savoriness. And uh, I'm you know a big fan of being lazy. And making a one pot dish uh, in a rice cooker sounds pretty good for a Sunday night, you know? Um, okay, let me get myself just sort of, this is what I call mise en place, right? I'm just getting everything uh, together here. Someone says, you heard that cooking cats in thin slices is important to keep them from tasting rubbery. That is a good suggestion, Jack Johnson. Um, I probably should have sliced them even a little bit thinner than I have because I, my, I sliced my cat like that. Um, pretty thick. And so maybe I should stay a little thinner. Oh, I'll deal with that when I'm not live. Let me uh, stay focused on what I'm doing here. So I'm going to just cut across these Matsutake and get pretty thin little slices because I want them to look very pretty um, perched up atop the rice. Uh, anyone who watched earlier, I sharpened my knife. And if the mushroom sounds squeaky, it's not because my mouth knife is not sharp. It is because uh, these mushrooms are just sort of inherently squeaky. They're super dense and they're squeaky. Um, I know in Japan, they tend to leave the brown stuff on because it's a sign that it's sort of uh, it's legit, I guess, uh, Matsutake, as opposed to like a lookalike, but I I just don't want to have any extra dirt or sand on here. Um, these things tend to be pretty, these ones particularly were pretty sandy. Um, I'm just gonna cut across here, get all this diced up. And these young Matsutake, these little buttons have just beautiful, uh, the margins of the cap are kind of inrolled here. Mm, amazing Matsutake smell. So look how like pretty and attractive that is. Oh, it smells so good. Um, okay. And let me know here if I'm not in frame. Um, I'm trying to do my best to make everything um, you know, so you guys can see everything I'm doing here. Let me just point this down a little bit more. Okay. I am, I'm not a, I'm not a professional chef. I am just an enthusiast and a nerd and uh, I cook a lot. So I'm just trying to share some of my process with you guys. Usually I do this, uh, you know, not online without an audience. Occasionally I have friends over for dinner and I make them sit at the countertop and watch me do all this stuff while they talk to me and, and drink here. Uh, but you know, it's harder to have people over for dinner these days because of COVID. And so I guess you guys are my dinner guests tonight. You know, um, you get all the fun of watching me make it with none of the fun of actually getting to eat it. So, <laughs> so my apologies, um, but you know, hopefully this will be entertaining and informative for you guys. Anyhow, so I had some rice that I'd washed. Um, it was a you know, sushi, medium grain sushi rice kind of thing. 
Uh, I washed it and then I soaked it in water for about an hour. I don't totally understand why you do that. I am not an uh, expert on cooking rice. In fact, I regularly mess up rice, uh, but that's part of why I use a rice cooker. And all I got to do then is really just get the liquid ratio right. And it will manage the heat for me. But I think soaking the rice a little bit helps make it a little plumper. Um, maybe maybe a little more toothy. I, I don't I don't really know. We'll, we'll see. It'll be good. Um, I have one other thing I wanted to do before I get started on this, because the assembly here is, is really pretty quick. This is not, not a high energy dish. But earlier, I took some really nice Persian cucumbers I got at the farmer's market, and I laid them out on my board, and I took my nice big knife, and I squashed them. I gave them a nice heavy pat pat, and, uh, and that squashed them. So now they look like this, and I salted them pretty heavily. So there's a bunch of liquid in here. So I'm gonna drain that liquid off into the sink and kind of press them a little bit. Oops, lost piece. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna press them, I'm gonna drain them, and uh, I made a marinade that has shoyu, which is soy sauce, and sugar, and mirin, and some chili garlic stuff, so you can see some sort of red chili garlic bits on top here. Um, and maybe you know, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of sesame oil here too, because that's I think part of the classic flavor profile. But it's, you know, it's rice wine vinegar, soy sauce, uh, sugar, and, you know, a little chili stuff. Maybe a little sesame oil. And this is a pretty classic combo. You see it a lot of dim sum places and stuff like that. So I'm just making kind of a quick, it's really just a quick pickle. But um, I'm going to pour this all over these guys. They're going to be really good. It's be nice to have some good, delicious green vegetable with uh, kind of hearty, savory rice and fish and mushroom dish. Um, I'm just gonna let these kind of soak in. And really, you know, you could do these day ahead of time. That would in some ways be better um, to really let the flavors kind of transfuse. But I'm gonna just put that, put that down, try to press everything into that marinade. And I can, I could pack these into a jar. But I just want to show you guys what I was doing there. Um, I ended up doing a lot, of, a lot of cooking off camera. You know, frequently when I post stories, I'm also cooking like two or th other three things on the side. Um, so you only see sort of a portion of what I'm doing, but I'm trying to show you guys everything as I go, go along here. So, so we got our rice, rice pot and I'm going to go ahead and just dump all this nice soaked rice in. You can see it's kind of, uh, kind of swollen a little bit. I'm going to do my best to actually not throw rice all over my kitchen. <laughs> there we go. Really should clean my floors. <laughs> Okay, so important part here will be seasoning this. And to season this, um, I should really measure stuff, but I'm really not big on measuring stuff. So we're just gonna wing it and we're gonna hope it turns out all right. Um, this is dashi base. And you can buy this stuff at Asian grocery stores and I absolutely love it. Um, because on the back, you have this little guide to all these different dishes you can make by using different ratios of this, of this stock. Um, but this is basically just Japanese bouillon, you know, and it's it's really easy. I think most recipes call for about two tablespoons of this. Um, so I'm going to put in I'm going to put in a good amount because we want this to be pretty savory. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go a little light on the soy because um, some of the recipes call for quite a bit of soy, but I like to keep it I like to keep it kind of lighter colored. Um, if anything, I I just add some extra salt. Uh, so that it stays a little bit lighter colored without changing the color too much. This is, uh, as I said, a mixture of Matsutake sake and Matsutake mirin from last year. And I'm just trying to use this stuff up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go hard on this. I'm gonna put quite a bit of this in. Um, I'm gonna put in uh, a lot of these kind of they're not quite pickled because it's not vinegar, but just a bunch of these gooey gooey Matsutake from last year. I'm gonna add some mirin. Um, so some actual, actual mirin, not just the Matsutake mirin, but that's a little extra sweetness. And then I'm just going to put in uh, water till it looks about right. Um, and this is this is where I'm sure people will have issues with what I what I do, and maybe I should measure. But somewhere right below the second knuckle should be pretty good. Um, and you know, I'm gonna cook some fish in here too, and some mushrooms, so hopefully that'll add a little extra moisture. Um, and just 
Just a hair more water though. No one likes rice that's still, you know, undercooked. Crunchy rice is good. Undercooked rice is not good. Okay, so I've got some ginkgo nuts here and I actually went out and picked these this afternoon and I was just crushing them. Um, so here's, here's what they look like. Uh, well, not fresh, but I, I took these and I pulled the fruit off wearing gloves because the, the fruit itself smells like really fetid, nasty cheese and gym socks. It smells terrible. Um, and it can cause like an allergic reaction in your, in your skin. Uh, so you want to be pretty careful with it. And once I got all the, the pulp off, I boiled them for just like 10 minutes. And then I just did a quick crack with my knife and, uh, and was peeling them. And they have a little kind of, uh, inside, uh, membrane on them. And I think that's okay. I'm pretty sure it's okay to eat. So I'm going to, been trying to sort of take it off for aesthetics because it's nice to have the green color, but, uh, it's also a pain in the ass. I'm not, I'm not going to get all of it. Um, but these are texturally, these are somewhere in between like an edamame and like a sprouted peanut. They have really nice bouncy character. But ginkgo nuts are uh, are very strong vasodilators. So they can, uh, your blood vessels grow bigger. So they're really good for blood flow. Uh, and people have used them as a way to, let's say, enhance virility because certain areas of the body are very dependent on blood flow, if you catch my meaning. Uh, but... I think the more important part is that there's really a warning with these things that you're not supposed to eat about more than somewhere between four and eight of them per sitting because they can actually cause some serious physiological effects. Um, and I certainly know that if you're going to go get dental work done, you really don't want to eat a whole bunch of ginkgo nuts because that can cause issues with the, um, the anesthetics because your body takes so much more anesthetic because uh, your your blood vessels are so dilated. Anyhow, uh, so I'm only going to put in a few. I'm not going to put in all the ones I picked. I'm just going to put in enough. So let's call it a, a tasteful amount. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this nice big chunk of rock fillet, or rockfish fillet. And you know, maybe I'll uh, switch it around so you can see a little bit better. Uh, I'm go ahead and dry the fillet off. I know it seems kind of silly because I'm just going to put it back into liquid, but I want to get the fish juice off of it. All right. And I think what I might do is rather than trying to leave it whole, um, I might just cut it up into chunks and, uh, and that'll help me kind of get it really evenly dispersed through this. Oh, shoot. I should have done this before I was on camera with you guys. Um, this thing has little pin bones, which last night I had to get, yeah, I'm going to have to get my wrench. So, I don't want to deal with fish bones. Ain't nobody like fish bones. Um, thanks, mom and dad, for this great wrench, pliers, whatever they're called. Um, I'm not. I'm not a super handy person, but I will use tools in the kitchen when necessary. So rah, this is really best done with a pair of like needle nose pliers. Um, but you know, I'm in a rush. I'll make you guys wait through me finding needle nose pliers. I have them somewhere, but I know where this was. Okay. So we're pulling these pin bones out. Uh, I just don't want to have fish bones in my nice, soft Matsutake rice afterwards. Oh, come here. I wish the guys at the, the fish market would have done this for me. Santa Rosa fish market. You're on note. Come on guys. I know y'all, you know, I bought this at the farmer's market, but I was really hoping that like a, you know, a guy would have would have taken the bones out for me. But uh, maybe I should have gone to Osprey and bought my fish there. That's uh, Osprey is a really good seafood market here in Napa. Those guys are cool. All right, here's my bones. They're out. Cool. I got this dried off significantly so. You can see some silver skin on the back here, but that's fine. All of it's good stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of salt with any piece of meat, I always like to put a little salt on the meat, um, rub it in just a bit. And I'm not doing a, a cooking method here that's super dependent on having like a crust forming on this meat, which is really the biggest reason that salt meat. But I do want to season it. And I think I've got a good amount of salty components in the rice, but I just want to make sure the fish itself has, has enough seasoning um, kind of built into it that it's not going to end up being a bland, a bland dish. So. Um, I'm going to cut this fillet down the middle. 
And then I'm just gonna cut some some nice fatty chunks here to, uh, to distribute across the rice. Oh, yum. It's a nice fish. I made a, a fish sandwich with this the other filet of this last night. Originally, I was going to make two of them, and then our friends fed us a bunch of surprise dumplings, which uh, which was awesome. But we weren't quite as hungry as we normally would have been. Uh, so I saved one of the fillets, and I'm really glad I did, because now I get to make a really cool Matsutake rice dish with this. So put that to the side. Bring this back up. And in here, I've got the... Uh, the soaked rice, and I've got some sort of pickled preserved matsutake, and I've got my ginkgo nuts. I've got the mirin and the dashi base and some shoyu. And uh, importantly, I've got a whole bunch of this matsutake uh, sake mirin stuff, and I, I made a video a couple hours earlier about how I made this. Um, I'm gonna take a few more of these, these things. Up drop them in there because why not? I'm trying to use this stuff up so I can make it fresh batch. And I'm going to throw in uh, my fish. I'm just going to kind of dot this in and around on the rice. Um, I'm assuming the fish will bleed a little bit of liquid as it cooks, and that's great. I want that. Um, do, 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 do. Oops, apparently I've been on Instagram for two hours today, I think. That's interesting. Um, okay, so I'm just dotting my fish around so you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, let's see. Raise this up a little bit more. Whoops, Daisy came off the came off the thing. Okay, there we go. There I go. Now you can see what I'm doing. Cool. Um, oh, hey, Chris. How you doing? Uh, cool. Okay, so I have my fish, my rice, all the good stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know what. I'm gonna put in a little bit of umeboshi paste, just kind of dot little bits in here. I don't know how this is gonna taste uh, with this dish, but umeboshi is a, a salted Japanese plum, and it's really good in some savory dishes. I really like it sort of fried up with shizo. Uh, this is a, a paste I bought that's just like umeboshi paste, basically. Uh, but I thought it would be sort of a nice addition. I don't see any way that like a little bit of that salty, sweet, flavor wouldn't be a nice addition to fish and matsutake. Um, but I don't want it to super color everything, so I'm going to kind of put it little drops of it around uh, down into the rice. Maybe maybe the color will show up in the rice, but I don't want it to make the matsutake purple. Um, okay, so do that. Um, this dish often calls for green onions, and I'm going to use some, but I'm going to wait until it comes out of the uh, the rice cooker, or I guess once it's cooked, to put, put green onions on. And then this was very much inspired by Leah Mycelia. She was saying that one of her favorite ways to eat matsutake uh, was with a like a pickled ginger kind of thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little bit of the pickled ginger I have and just uh, dot a little bit around because um, I really love kind of the the spicy, sweet, savoriness of this stuff. Um, it's a really nice complement to most things. In fact, I I put some of this pickled ginger on my on my fish sandwich last night. So all of this just kind of follows and you know, the flavors are evolving. My techniques and ideas are evolving as, as we go. Um, and I don't want to put in too much. I don't want to overwhelm anything because Matsutake is a fairly uh, subtle flavor in some ways. But now I'm going to put on lots of Matsutake on top, all this nice sliced Matsutake. And this is our Matsutake rice gohan. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's close enough. That's how you spell it. I'm pronouncing it phonetically <laughs> for anyone who wants to Google a recipe. So we've got lots of matsutake going down here. I'm going to, maybe I can hide some of the less photogenic pieces underneath and we'll keep them really nice. These pretty uh, inrolled edges are kind of what we want to see. So I've got that all set. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and pop this thing in the rice cooker. Fingers crossed I have enough liquid to actually finish cooking the rice. Um, but I think it's gonna be delicious and I'll show you guys the, the final product. Okay, it's been about 25, 30 minutes since I started this. Ooh, there's our Matsutake Gohan. Wow, look at that. I threw in a little bit of green onion about halfway through as it was cooking. But I'm gonna throw some more green onion on top and go ahead and serve this up.
We got the fish and the ginkgo nuts. And some rice, and dashi, lots of matsutake. Really good stuff. This should be delicious.